Hello friends, welcome back to English Classes Online. My name is Benjamin. Today's video is on analyzing African poetry in the West African Senior School Certificate Examination and our focus is on a government driver on his retirement by Onu Kinsley Chibuike. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded on this channel, you will be instantly notified. Without much ado, let's dive into the lesson. First, the agenda for today's episode. Number one, what is the poem about? Two, reading the poem. Three, analyzing the poem. We want to adopt a simple approach just to give you a clear picture of the poem, what it is really about, and what you can learn from it, and give you insight into how to analyze uh, how to analyze African poetry. All right, so that's what we are going to do right away. Now, what is the poem about? Onu Kingsley Chibuke's poem, A Government Driver on His Retirement, gives an overview of a retired driver's happy celebration, which eventually ends in his tragic death in a car accident. The poem paints a picture of one of the major causes of road accidents on our highways, which is alcoholism, or if you like, driving under the influence of alcohol. Now, let's get into the reading. I mean, the reading of the poem. Let's read the poem. Let's go. Here we are. A Government Driver on His Retirement by Onu Kinsley Chibike. This is the full poem, and I want us to read the poem. All right? You can follow the movement of the causer. Many years on wheels, in faithful service to his fatherland. All right? Many years on wheels, in faithful service to his fatherland, today retires he home and the celebration he holds. Many years has he pummeled his boozy throat in obedience to duty rules and regulations. Today he will go home a free man, eligible for his country's services. Come, friends, rejoice with me. I shall booze and zoom myself home, away from duty rules. Come, celebrate my freedom. Early to duty tomorrow holds not. Thirty-five years of faithful services. I will booze to sleep, away my sufferings. Today I have long waited for. More joy to send him home, a brand new car in his name, an appreciative symbol for undented 35 years of service to fatherland. Come, friends, and rejoice more. Joy till no more joy to joy. Today frees and makes me a king. My patience rewarded and so he boozed and boozed celebrating the celebration of his retirement from faithful service to fatherland he battled with his bottle booze on his way home on wheels booze boozed his vision and clear judgment he boomed his brand new car and he sent him home home 
to rest in peace. Wow, what an irony. Well, the reading has given us a picture, a full picture of the poem, for we have just read the, the full poem, A Government Driver on His Retirement by Onu Kinsley Chibike. Now, let's go into analyzing the poem, and we shall take it stanza by stanza. Uh, we will read a stanza, and then we will analyze it. As we read, we analyze, all right? Let's begin with stanza one. Many years on wheels, in faithful service to his fatherland, Today retires he home, and the celebration he holds. Now many years on wheels gives us a picture of a driver behind the wheels of a car or a vehicle. So obviously, this is talking about a driver who has plied the roads many years, you know, in the course of his duty. In faithful service to his fatherland gives us the picture of someone who has been in his country's civil service, all right? And today retires he home, gives us a picture that today is the end of his service. Retirement, of course, uh, you, you need to understand that this poem is set in, a, in the country Nigeria, and in this setting, uh, as in other African countries, of course, the various things call for celebration, especially when it is viewed as an achievement. You know, in Nigeria, for instance, retirement happens on uh, two different grounds. Uh, if I am quite correct in that uh, analysis. Well, uh, some retire on the basis of age. When they reach a certain age, they retire. Others retire on the basis of the number of years of service. And in, you know, a government driver on his retirement, his retirement is based on the mandatory 35 years service. He has served for 35 years and he is due for retirement. And today is uh, his last day and a celebration he holds. Now we look at it, that's the picture. So stanza one gives a picture of, his, of the persona's current state. Well, let's get certain things clear here. The persona is the narrator here. Well, uh, when we look at the persona, we could be talking about the character itself, but we have to differentiate the character of the driver uh, from the persona who is the narrative voice here, because this poem uses the third person narrative technique, all right? And that is when a work of art uh, narrates uh, the story using the third person personal pronoun, he or she or they or them, then that is the third person. And we can spot this in, especially in line three, today retires he, whom, and also in line four, and the celebration he holds. So the narrator is referring to the character uh, in the third person. So that's exactly uh, one thing you need to know about the poem. Now, having served faithfully as a government driver, which is what many years on wheels tells us, this is his last day on his job before he retires. The achievement calls for celebration. All right, all right we have already mentioned this. Now, of course, in this first stanza, can we see uh, the use uh, evidence of the poet using some poetic devices? Of course, yes. The first line gives us uh, a poetic device 
that is known as Sinedeki, all right? Although some people might try to argue Sinedeki, of course, some students mispronounce this as Sinodoche, all right? I remember my days in school as a student when we didn't know the appropriate pronunciation we call this sinodoche <laughs> all right so if you have been pronouncing this uh, you know in that way uh, it is important you learn the appropriate pronunciation is sinedeki all right now sinedeki is uh, a figure of speech that uses the part to represent the whole of course, uh, most examples of Sinedeki refer to parts of a human being, such as all hands must be on dead, or all fingers are not equal, all right, or a sea of heads. Now, this equally is a kind of Sinedeki because here wheels refer to the part, just one part of the car but wheels are used here to represent the, the entire car. Many years on wheels does not mean that this man has been on top of the wheel of his car. He has been driving the car, but the wheels are used to represent the car, and that is just what Sinedeki does. All right? Then we can see some archaic use of language here. Today retires he home, and the celebration he holds. Now, you can see, if you are familiar with Middle English, you can find uh, Middle English usage in probably the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Uh, all right? So, but, you know, in poetry, a cake use of language is acceptable. Today, retire, see home. If you, in, 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 a day -to -day, in everyday language, we don't uh, use language like this. Today, retire, see home. And the celebration he holds. Of course, we don't use language like this. So this also is uh, to be taken note of because uh, in grammar, we could refer to this as a kind of, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it sort of breaks the rules of language because uh, if you are talking about uh, the structure of modern English, uh, you will be talking about SVO, uh, subject, verb, object, all right? Uh, a celebration he holds should be he holds a celebration he is the subject holds is the verb a celebration is the object but here the this uh, this uh, uh, sentence structure is really violated but artistically it is acceptable and it is uh, it, it it is also uh, an aspect of language style to take note of here in this one. All right, so let's wipe this and then uh, let's go to stanza two. Here we are in stanza two and we want to look at more of the various aspects of the poem. Stanza 2 says, Many years has he pummeled his boozy throat in obedience to duty rules and regulations. Today he will go home a free man, eligible for his country's services. So we look at this. Many years has he pummeled 
his boozy throat. Now you look at the word pumel from the derived from the word pumel. Uh, it gives a picture of someone hitting you like a boxer, you know. So he, he has, so to say, you know, subjected himself to a kind of torture. He has deprived himself. He has deprived his boozy throat. The word boozy here uh, is an adjective which has to do with, uh, you know, drinking large quantities of alcoholic drink. You know, a boozy throat is a throat which has the tendency to drink or consume large quantities of alcohol. And, you know, many years has he pummeled his boozy throat, means that he has actually, you know, he has subjected his boozy throat to this kind of torture, you know, by depriving it of the wine, the, the alcoholic drink it always uh, likes to drink, all right? Something like that. So this gives a picture of someone who has a, a kind of addiction, you know, is addicted to alcoholic drinks. Uh, because of his uh, duty, because of his uh, job as a government driver, he has deprived himself of that uh, enjoyment, so to say, you know. Now, uh, this denial, this deprivation is talking about which he presents uh, through the image of hitting hard or like a boxer, you know, like fighting something, hitting uh, hard uh, at something, you know. All this he has really suffered in obedience to duty rules and regulations. So you can see here that the this character's notion, his idea of duty, duty rules and regulations, uh, he, 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 his idea or his notion of duty rules and regulations is that of, you know, someone being in bondage. In other words, he has been in bondage, he has been in a kind of, uh, in, in, he has imprisoned himself all these years that he has been uh, in the service of the government because he had to obey duty rules and regulation and this actually uh, deprived him of the opportunity of consuming large quantities of alcoholic drink which his throat uh, always desired now line three today he will go home a free man again you see that he has a distorted notion of freedom he will now be free to consume large quantities of alcohol that of course is the idea of freedom that this man has now stanza two gives a picture of how the persona views his years on duty as a government driver the job deprived him of the freedom to drink yes we have already pointed that out clearly it was a period when he had to be on duty and he had to obey the rules and regulations so you can see you know this attitude this mentality is common, is a prevailing attitude among uh, people in the civil service. And it cuts across uh, the sectors of the economy, the socio-political uh, populace, you know, people in the private sector, people in the industry, people in, the, uh, in all sectors of, the nat of national life, you know, suffer from this mentality you know they look at 
obeying rules and regulations as a kind of imprisonment you know so freedom to uh, violate rules and regulations obviously is not the right notion of what freedom should be about now that it is time to retire he will go home a free man so he is free from rules and regulation all right is free from rules and regulation but we will discover that there is something really wrong with this idea of freedom because when you set yourself free from rules and regulation that should uh, enable you to uh, follow the right path of course like a train you will derail from the track and the results will be catastrophic all right so you can notice that something is certainly wrong with the man's notion of freedom freedom to drink alcohol is that a true notion of freedom freedom to disobey rules and regulations freedom to violate traffic laws now you can see the the picture that this uh, poem is painting the poet uh, Kinsley uh, is you know is painting a picture is portraying a, the this kind of negative mentality that is that prevails among the citizens you know the 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 wrong notion of freedom and the negative perception of you know rules and regulations actually uh, is at the the roots of the nation's problems all right because if people should obey rules and regulations then things will go well in the civil service things will go well uh, in terms the 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 incidence of road accidents will also be minimized all right so let's go to the next uh, stanza and uh, continue with our analysis so here we uh, go come to stanza three all right still on reading and analyzing the poems uh, stanza three let's look at it come friends rejoice with me I shall booze and zoom myself home away from duty rules. Come celebrate my freedom. Early to duty tomorrow holds not. 35 years of faithful services. I will booze to sleep away my sufferings. Today I have long waited for. Now the, the character here, uh, the, the subject of the poem continues to invite friends to come rejoice with him. In line one, stanza three, he says, Come, friends, rejoice with me. All right, so the it is all about the retirement, and you can see that the emphasis is on celebrating the retirement, and uh, of course. This man's idea of retirement is also something faulty because if uh, you give all the emphasis on rejoicing, where is the planning for the, your life after retirement, you know? Uh, so you see, that actually is a wrong mentality that the, the whole emphasis and the whole attention is on celebrating the retirement, all right? And of course, uh, this character here is uh, also, if you look at line two, you discover what is utterly wrong. I shall booze and zoom myself home. Now, booze here, uh, is a word that can be used as a noun and also as a verb. Now, booze is another name for alcoholic drink, and it, but it is used as a verb here. So to report action, I shall booze is talking of 
his plan, his proposal, his intention, what he wants to do, he will drink a large quantity of alcohol. Then, and Zoom myself home gives a very uh, dangerous picture. Why do I say dangerous? Because this is this suggests that after consuming a large quantity of alcohol, this character is going to drive himself home. I will booze and zoom myself home. So here we find uh, some poetic devices used here to actually uh, convey this message and deepen its uh, its uh, uh, profundity, right? Booze and zoom. You can uh, first of all notice the assonance, you know, similarity, you know, uh, re repetition of a the, the same vowel sound, booze and zoom. All right, the long U sound is actually repeated there. U, right? You can see it here, you know, in booze and in zoom. And uh, again, we find the use of onomatopoeia, you know, using a word that, you know, using a word that describes an object or an action according to its sound, booze and zoom. All right, zoom here uh, reflects the sound of a car when he eventually uh, drives himself home, all right? I shall booze and zoom myself home. Then line three gives us uh, a picture it takes up the same image of the wrong notion of freedom away from duty rules. You know, is, what is celebrating is freedom from rules, freedom from obedience to rules. In other words, while he has been in the service of the government, he actually obeyed rules. He saw rules as part of his duty. And what is wrong here is that in his life after retirement, he, he is going to be free from obeying these rules. In other words, his freedom uh, from duty is, is, uh, is equal to his freedom from rules. And incidentally, the rules he refers to here uh, include traffic rules, all right? And as a driver, he's going to apply the rules and he's going to violate the rules because he's now moving away from these rules that earlier defined his everyday life. Come celebrate my freedom. Again, you see that freedom is all about moving away from rules. All right, then let's move to the next line. Early to duty tomorrow holds not. You see, he, the, today marks the end of his uh, uh, his duty as a government driver. So he's not going to work tomorrow. And therefore, he's moving away from rules. He's moving away from duty. Now, the next line, 35 years of faithful services. Uh, of course, this reflects the mandatory 35 years that uh, a member of the civil service uh, has to work, is the mandatory number of years uh, before a civil servant uh, goes on retirement. And this driver in question the character, the central character in this uh, poem actually has put in 35 years. And it is ironical that the word faithful service is used here in spite of his wrong perception of what uh, service is all about 
what duty is all about and what rules are all about all right in any case uh, we find a situation where some people when they have a job they will do everything that it takes to retain the job so the fear of losing their job can actually compel them to obey rules and comply with the regulations that govern uh, the workplace. But the moment they leave the workplace, of course, they become reckless, they become lawless, they become carefree, all right? So, and that is the kind of character we find in this driver uh, who is the central character in this poem. Now, the next uh, line, I will boost to sleep away my sufferings. Again, you can see the picture he paints of his, um, how he views his years in the civil service. Uh, he has regarded his duty, his job as uh, something that brought him sufferings. All right. One then wonders whether after his retirement, he is not going to do any work whatsoever. All right. He will only uh, he will only retire and go to sleep. Of course, I will boost to sleep away my sufferings here. Suggest that uh, his retirement is going to be characterized by drinking alcohol and sleeping most of the time, which actually is not the best idea of what life in retirement should be. Of course, we have a lot of people who after their retirement go into a personal business, some go into farming, and some go into writing. It is important that uh, when one retires, one should continue to live an active life. Otherwise, if you if you succumb to uh, bad habits such as alcoholism, of course that can also affect your health. All right. Then the last line here: Today I've longed. Today I've long waited for. He has been waiting for this retirement and it has eventually come so we can see here that stanza three gives us a picture of the the man's excitement his mood and the content of his celebration the celebration the chief item is booze which is you know alcoholic drink all right uh, and then surprisingly he defines his manner of celebrating. I shall booze and zoom myself home. Consuming alcohol is usually uh, most people's way of celebrating an achievement. All right, in Nigeria, in other African countries, and perhaps in various countries of the world, you know, when people uh, have a cause to celebrate, their idea of celebration is to consume a large amount of alcohol, all right? Some, even in extreme cases, uh, resort to taking uh, drugs, you know? They become addicted to drugs because they have, you know, uh, they have achieved uh, some, uh, they have made some personal achievements, so they celebrate. And in the process of celebrating, they actually plunge themselves into a tragedy, just as it is the case with this driver, uh, who is the central character of this poem. What is shocking is the man's decision to drive himself home in his drunken state as part of the celebration. You can see it in line two here, I shall booze and zoom myself home all right so celebration you know is one thing that is actually a good thing because when you uh, 
make an achievement, it is good to celebrate it. But when you celebrate, when you celebrate it wrongly, it can spell doom. And of course, we know that every good thing can be abused. Even the best thing in life can be abused. And if the purpose of something is really uh, not uh, followed or adhered to, then abuse becomes the situation, the resulting situation, as we find it here. Again, we find that it's all part of his newfound freedom, you see? So freedom to live a carefree life. And we can see here that if we have to allude to the, to the Bible, I will, uh, I will, uh, you know, I will refer to the prodigal, the parable of the prodigal son. You know, that is, is something that is close to what we find in the attitude of this driver. The kind of freedom the prodigal son uh, snatched from his father. Freedom to go and live his life recklessly. The Bible says that he left his father, he went into a strange country, and spent all his substance on riotous living, all right, reckless living. So you see, that is an abuse of life itself, and that is an abuse of freedom, because the prodigal son wanted freedom. He wanted to break away from the life of discipline prevailing in his father's house. He wanted freedom to live his life the way he wanted it. And this government driver cherished this kind of freedom, freedom to drink alcohol, consume large quantities of alcohol, break traffic rules, and of course this kind of freedom leads one to tragedy. All right, so now let's move on to the next uh, stanza so we can uh, we look at stanza four here all right more joy to send him home a brand new car in his name an appreciative symbol for undented 37 years of service to fatherland now line one in stanza four uh, looks uh, ironical, you know, more joy to send him home. And what is more joy to send him home here is a brand new car in his name. Obviously, it is a parting gift that he receives from the government for undented 35 years of service to fatherland, which if you ask me, is questionable because for a man whose perception of service is wrong, whose perception of duty is wrong, whose perception of rules is wrong, whose perception of freedom is wrong, of course, uh, it calls to question the kind of assessment that is done in the civil service. Perhaps the wrong people get uh, the right awards, all right? And perhaps the right people are deprived of the, the right awards. However, it is also possible that this man, during his uh, period in the service, has actually put in all uh, his effort and has also complied with the rules, not because it is part of his lifestyle, but because of the fear of losing his job. That also is possible and is another team that can actually be pursued, that can be explored in this term. How the fear of losing one's job can compel one to obey all the rules and regulations in the civil service. But the moment the person retires, then he breaks away 
from the rules and regulations and becomes an, a totally lawless person, just as we find this driver on his retirement. So by talking about more joy to send him home, we, we spot an irony here because what is pictured as giving as uh, the cause, the, the, the joy, you know, to send him home eventually turns out to be the, the, re, the very thing that sends him uh, into his, uh, his, his, his grave that actually plunges him into his tragic death. All right, so there is a tinge of irony here. More joy to send him home. All right. Uh, so having uh, looked at that, we we see all in all that stanza four reveals the multiplier of his joy. The more joy to send him home, as already uh, mentioned in stanza one, and that specifically is a brand new car in his name. Obviously, the parting gift from the government. Now, line one seems to be paradoxical, if not ironical. Now, what is described as more joy to send him home turns out to be the very cause of his tragic death. And that's talking about the car. All right. So here again, we can see how, you know, people are unable to manage their success. Uh, you find a lot of people, you know, they, they buy a car. It happens often here in Nigeria that someone will buy a car and uh, mostly on, uh, on, on Christmas, you know, uh, he lives in the city. So he wants to take his car home, his new car home, to show off, you know, to celebrate with his uh, with his kid and kin, and because of this euphoria, because of this joy, basking in the euphoria, the joy, the celebration mood, you know, the, some of them plunge the car into a, a river. Some will, uh, you know, have a head-on collision with a trailer or run even into uh, a, a, a lorry, and, and that's the end of the man or the woman, if, if as the case may be. So it is, you see that this is a, a common, uh, a common uh, error, a common tragic flaw, so to say, in various characters. And we can see that what the poet is really uh, exploring here what is portraying in this poem is a, is a social evil, a prevailing social evil, a, a kind of habit that always increases the rate of mortality. All right? So now let's go to stanza five. All right? And stanza five says, Come, friends, and rejoice more. You see that it seems that the rejoicing uh, never comes to an end. It seems to be endless, and the invitation is persistent. All right, come, friends, and rejoice more. Again, we can see uh, poetic devices being used here. Repetition is a predominant uh, poetic device used here. Come, friends, and rejoice is repeated in various stanzas. All right, uh, then the word joy is multiplied. Look at verse 2. Joy till no more joy to joy. Again, you see the idea of excess here. All right, anything taken to in excess, of course, always uh, comes with uh, unpleasant consequences. All right. It is really wrong to, you know, to joy, and, and then you bring the joy to an end. You know, joy till no more joy to joy. For me, it, this is actually, uh, it, it, is, uh, it is questionable, 
you know, this kind of mentality. And you find it in different uh, characters all over the world that people, uh, uh, you know, once they have a cause to rejoice, they take it to the extreme. Some people in the process of celebrating their, six, uh, their, their success have drugged themselves to death, right? They have, they have taken cocaine or heroin or any of these, uh, these uh, substances and they, they have perished in the process. Joy to no more joy to joy, all right? Uh, we have um, a kind of a slogan by alcoholic consumers in, 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 in our society that instead of the alcoholic drink to remain in the pot or in the can or in the bottle, it should, uh, it should go into the, the stomach or the belly. You know, that is this habitual, uh, you know, wine buy-buys, you know, alcoholic consumers. They want to, you know, and when you, when you are talking about joy, 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 and celebration, it's all about intoxication, the use of intoxicants, the use of addictive substances. That actually is another wrong notion of joy, you know, rejoicing is good in itself. Of course, joy is a good thing. Joy is a positive thing. But when it, when it is actually uh, misunderstood and when it is abused, it, it becomes really bad. All right? Uh, because there is really no joy in drugging yourself to death. There is no joy in drinking yourself to stupor. All right? There is really no joy in drinking alcohol and driving in the process and eventually ending your life. Joy till no more joy to joy. Then you can see the use of alliteration to really underscore this idea here. You know, alliteration is the, repeat, the repetition of the initial consonant sound of words in uh, in lines of poetry and so you can see joy you have the the letter j another joy here the letter j another joy the letter j so both repetition and alliteration are poetic devices used here and then we can also spot assonance assonance because the sound of oi is in joy Another joy has the sound of oi, and another joy here has the sound of oi. The repetition of the same uh, vowel sound in lines of poetry is called assonance, and we find that as a poetic device here. Even the sound of o, o here is a long o sound. So it's really not the same sound with this uh, this is um, uh, actually a double sound, while this is a monotone, but a long vowel sound. Now, uh, line three, today frees and makes me a king. All right, the same idea of freedom, my patience rewarded. So here we can see, uh, you know, that this man's idea of working is that of being in bondage and he had to do that with patience so uh, of course he has given us a picture of it of a lack of job satisfaction because through his his period in the civil service has rather been endured than enjoyed so there is really no uh, no job fulfillment all right, and we will find also this a prevailing ugly situation, not only in the civil service in this country, but also in different sectors that people are doing a job that they are really not passionate about. And they are just doing it to earn a living 
It's not that it is something they love to do. All right? It is, he has always done this job with patience. And it is this is patience that has been rewarded here. Now, the, this stanza brings us to the person, the persona's renewed invitation to friends to come and rejoice more. The overdoing of the celebration is evident in line two, as already pointed out. Joy till no more joy to joy. This gives a picture of gluttony. You know, gluttony is eating food to excess. And if we can take up this idea and apply it to different other things. You want to drink, you drink overdose, you want to celebrate, you take it to the extreme. You can find this virtually in all sectors. In sports, you find it, you know. You find the you find the fans of a particular uh, football club when their club uh, wins, they celebrate to the excess uh, to the to the extreme, and some even die in the process of the celebration. All right, so emotions are stretched. Emotion emotions are taken to the extreme in the name of rejoicing, in the name of celebrating. All right, so, and you find it virtually in all sectors of life. People win an election, you know. We have had instances where a politician won an election in this country, and some people died in the process of celebrating a, 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 the, 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 the election victory of a politician who doesn't even care for them in the first place. All right, so you can you always find this really as recurring, you know, uh, recurring decimals in our society, and all these are multiple themes that are explored in this uh, in this poem. All right, if you really uh, take time to analyze it, you find a lot of ideas expressed. Some of them quite universal. And some of them, I can, uh, let me not say, uh, a little bit endemic to the immediate environment, all right? The tendency to eat overdose, drink overdose, it happens everywhere. Now, again, the justification for this recklessness is the notion of freedom. You, you know, the celebration is all about freedom. Today frees and makes me a king. All right, and again, you 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 have seen that this kind of freedom is is a, is a misconceived freedom, is an abused freedom, all right, so to say. Now let's go to the next uh, stanza. Of course, the last one. Of course, uh, uh, some have classified the stanzas into eight. Of course, some of the stanzas are put together uh, but let's just in no particular order look at uh, the lines of the poem and try to analyze them so this i call this stanza six you know for the purpose of this video all right so let's go through it let's uh, wipe the marks here so that uh, this Max won't confuse us. And so he boozed and boozed, celebrating the celebration of his retirement from faithful service to fatherland. He battled with his bottle booze on his way home on wheels, booze boozed his vision and clear judgment. He boomed his brand new car and it sent him home, home to rest in peace. Well, this actually uh, has risen to a climax and we have come to the end of the poem and the poem ends in tragedy and we can see that this is a tragic uh, poem, all right? So, it ends in the in the tragedy of the central character all right so 
Let's look at this one by one. And so he boosted and boosted. So this again we find onomatopoeia boost. All right. And then here again we find assonance, the rep repetition of the same uh, vowel sound. All right. And here we also find alliteration, repetition of the initial consonant sound uh, in words within this line of poetry. But thematically, we find the habit disturbing, you know. He, the, because of the celebration, he continued to consume large quantities of alcohol and it was as if he was not going to stop drinking. Now, celebrating the celebration of his retirement, all right, from faithful service to fatherland, he battled with his bottle booze. So again, you find here that what is called joy, rejoicing, or enjoyment is now turning into a battle. And that is actually what happens when you consume a large amount of alcohol. It catapults you into an island of crisis. And it is as if your entire brain is already turning round and round. And you may come to a point where, you know, you will just continue to drink and you can no longer uh, reason. You can no longer uh, think clearly. You can no longer uh, know. You, you won't even know what you are doing anymore. All right? So a kind of madness results from what you call rejoicing. The, res the result becomes a state of madness, a state of confusion, a state of crisis. All right? On his way home on wheels, again, you find this quite disturbing, that even in this state of stupor, in this state of drunkenness, he persists, you know, to drive himself home. On his way home on wheels, all right? And again, here you can find a kind of overconfidence. You know, a man who has uh, plied the roads for 35 years. Of course, he can tell you that he knows everything about driving. And of course, everything now seems very easy and he doesn't have any need to take any precaution anymore because he has come to a point where he is the king of the road. So he can drive anyhow and in any condition. This explains why he can still jump into his car and decide to drive himself, himself home after boozing and boozing, after consuming large quantities of alcohol. This is a violation of the traffic rule, but we can see what happens when people set themselves free from rules and regulations. Uh, we can uh, define self-discipline as you know uh, one's uh, decision to train himself to obey rules and regulations when you you know when you make up your mind and compel yourself to obey rules and regulations to comply with rules and regulations when you become principled and you want to do things in line with rules and regulations of course that is self discipline but when a man throws discipline uh, and all, every atom of caution to the wind, a disaster is looming. So on his way home on wheels, boost, boost his vision and clear judgment. Of course, here the poet is giving us a picture of the negative impact of alcohol on the on uh, on one's mental faculties you lose 
vision. And you know, if you are driving on the highway, you need to see clearly, even far off, all right? So that you can see oncoming vehicle, you can see where they are, you are coming to a sharp bend and all that. But because of the ex excessive consumption of alcohol, his vision is affected and his clear judgment is also distorted. So alcohol consumption affects your mental faculties and it also weakens your sense of judgment. That this is exactly what the poet is portraying here. Boost, boost his vision and clear judgment. And again, you can see here uh, uh, the use of uh, repetition, alliteration, and assonance. But all in all, again, you, you find a kind of um, uh, personification that Booz, you know, can, you know, boost boost his vision and clear judgment. All right. So uh, a lot of poetic devices are used here. Then we find onomatopoeia here. He boomed his brand new car. He boomed, you know. The word boomed reflects the sound of the car and shows exactly, probably high, highlighting or underscoring the recklessness with which he drove off. All right? And it sent him home. All right? It sent him home, home to rest in peace. This refers to the eventual uh, tragic a car accident that eventually ends his life all right so we can see here irony is a, a prevailing uh, poetic device here because uh, you can see that it is all about celebration but then it, celebration turns to tragedy joy turns to mourning and uh, you know going home turns out to be uh, to death right we can see here the use of euphemism all right i want you to take note of these you know devices the use of euphemism here is implied is evident euphemism is the use of polite words and expressions to describe or refer to uh, uh, to bad or ugly situations, all right? So euphemism is evident here. So you can see uh, euphemism is here when you say home to rest in peace and this is a description of death all right instead of saying that he died the poet is using the word you know going home all right so death is described as going home here and he sent him home there's something metaphorical here all right, because it sent him home. Now, sending home here really is is a is a substitution. You know, it sent him home means it killed him. You know, so but then that real action of you know killing him, the 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 the, the, the brand new car that he zoomed, it killed him, and then. The expression, it sent him home, is used in place of it killed him. So again, we find the use of metaphor here in referring to uh, using uh, something else to refer to another thing. This action, sent him home, is, has a different meaning. But then what it is referring to seems to be 
completely opposite. All right. You 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 discover that you know the the driver actually is on his way home, and so you can see also irony used here because the the speaker or the narrator doesn't have this in mind. The words used here, the meanings of the words used here are quite different from the actual intended meaning. You know, the meaning here is that the car killed him, sent him home. The car didn't really, uh, uh, he didn't drive home safely to his house. Rather, he died on the way. But here we find it sent him home. So we, we see the use of irony, we see the use of metaphor. Different poetic devices are involved here. And here, uh, when we are talking about resting in peace to describe death, the use of euphemism is there. So here we have seen the last verse here gives us a picture of how the government driver on his retirement ended in a car accident on his way home. After drinking himself to stupor, he insists on driving himself home. I will booze and zoom myself home. This has actually been his deliberate announcements, all right, in stanza three. How drunkenness affects uh, his sense of judgment and leads uh, to the car accident is highlighted in, in line six of this last uh, stanza here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boost, boost his vision and clear judgment. All right. Uh, so, so that is exactly, and this is where we are going to draw the curtain in today's uh, video. We have been analyzing uh, African poetry, and I hope you learned quite a number of lessons and you i hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to like the video and share the video with your friends and relations if you have not subscribed to this channel time has really come for you to subscribe to the channel because on this channel we we provide value to our viewers and it is really something we are committed to and something we love doing because uh, what we do in this channel is to provide value to you. We, you are the reason why we are here. You can, if you listen to the first video I uploaded on literature, uh, you, you must have uh, heard my comments at the beginning and in the course of the of the video that I started uploading videos in literature in response to re, uh, uh, requests and suggestions from uh, some of our highly esteemed viewers and subscribers on this channel. And this has really paid off because uh, as I earlier said, literature is really uh, my area of specialization. I am an author, a published author of five novels in paperback that are used in various schools in my country. So uh, I understand literature, I studied literature, and I appreciate literature, I analyze literature, and I enjoy literature. So really, uh, I want to say a big thank you once more to all of you out there who have actually given massive support to this channel and you have shown really what it means to collaborate uh, and to ensure that uh, the value we provide on this channel is even uh, increased. And I promise that in all my videos, I will always put in my best to ensure that all of you out there get what you want. Once again, I want to say a big thank you. If you have any comments, any concerns, any suggestions, any questions, leave them in the comments section below. See you in the next video.
and bye bye for now.